So if, if you also now go want to share some of your junior stories, I guess with the viewers, some with the, the salsa and the moose show words of, of how you made those teams but also what, what it took uh, as a young player to, do you get drafted in the WHO as well? Yeah. So uh, I got drafted at, I think I was like 13, 14, because I had a late birthday. Um, yep. So I was 15 when I started with the salsa and I was living at home, going to school every day, practices at three o'clock. So lucky me, I didn't have to go to school in the afternoon, but it was so fun just because there was a bunch of guys that literally we all grew up playing at racket club together. It was amazing. This group of guys we had, um, and it was, I learned very quick as a 15 year old playing against 20, 21 year olds that it's pretty dangerous too and scary, but it could be a lot of fun. So one game, uh, one of the first games of the season, I, I had to fight like a 21 year old and it went well for me, but then I kind of got stuck in that role, but I also got stuck in the role of getting to play with good players to protect them. I give them the puck and I go to the net. It's very, very simple. My job is very simple. Like, uh, that was my role. And then when I went to Moose Jaw, uh, Greg Batters, I, was, I think I was 13 or 14. I went to rookie camp and then they invited me to main camp. And I was talking to some former coaches and guys and they're like, okay, just, you know, set the tone early. First game, find the biggest guy and go fight him. And I'm like, all right. So I'm wearing full cage, helmet off, got the guy to fight. I'm 14. I'm probably like 100. I was a pretty big kid, but I was not very yeah, you're skinny. Strong. Literally, the guy probably hit me with a uh, hundred punches. <laughs> I, I got back to my bench because there's no penalties in camp. I had lumps everywhere in my head. I couldn't put my helmet back on. It was <laughs> the most embarrassed I've ever been, and the most like probably painful I've ever been. Like I was like didn't know what to do. The guy, the other guy went back to his bench. And told the guys, like, I didn't know what to do. I stopped throwing rice and just was hitting lefts. I felt so bad for the kid. <laughs> so, but that kind of got me my in because I wanted it. I, I, my way of making teams, I was, never, I was never a good playmaker. I was just literally, I would protect teammates. I yeah. would give other guys the puck. I would just try and cycle and I'd just go right to the net yeah. and just play with energy. And that's a lot of the reasons I only met, you have kind of have to find a role on every team and everybody wants to be the goal scorer. Like, you know how much fun that would be just to be the goal scorer who doesn't have to fight. But at the same time, there can only be a couple guys on each team that are just pure like that. And so if you don't kind of find a role and you have to want it, and if you don't want that role, then it's just, you have to accept it. And I've seen a lot of guys not accept it, which I don't blame them because it's, it's not a lot of fun to get punched in the face. It's not a lot of fun to, you know, have to be that defenseman, that stay-at-home defenseman that blocks 150 shots a year and just eats pucks all the time. So you have to, you know, you, you have to find a role and, and every, it could be different on every team to find that role too. Yeah, and an identity. You have to show who you want to, who you are, your strengths, and then the, the coaches from there also kind of dictate uh, how you'll use those skills and, and that identity as well. They, they put you with certain guys and that type of thing. Um, and then just for some of the viewers, when you talk about your stories, about having to fight uh, that guy at camp, I think that's what I remember hearing a lot of time, a lot of times, not that I was a fighter, but you know, the back in the days, they just would tell us, Hey, if you mean business, you'll kind of scrap right away into camp. Cause then you'll be noticed. And, and, you know, I mean, you yourself being a bigger guy, um, it's kind of a little, I guess, expected as the toughness, um, not yeah. to be the toughest guy or, or fight no. all the time, but, but they want a big guy to be able to, um, you know, protect his teammates. And no, that's, and that's a big thing too, was, was my second year when I'm in Moose Jaw, I led my team in goals and penalty met. Like, I'm not sure how many guys and that played in the Western league could say they do that, but that's, I got put on the line with Jamie Lundmark, who was a first rounder and, my job was to protect him. It was also to give him the puck. And I think he bounced a couple pucks off my face that year that went in. Uh, like it was like, it, yeah. So you, you kind of have to find that role and find a spot, but if you're good at it, and I've seen a lot of good players that make have long careers, just 
keeping it simple. It's, it's just, I think it's kind of like life. You keep it simple. And to pass along as well, you know, as, as a coach now to these players within that, those ages, I guess you'd say 13 all the way to 20 years old in that junior hockey range there. You know, it's these days, it's not just a matter of them fighting. Um, there is fighting in the game, but there's not as much, but it'd be more like them going after, you know, one of the bigger players and finishing their check on them because then the, the, coaches or the management is able to see okay if that guy can go and hit those guys he can play at the next level here it's yeah. not about just going after the littlest guy and being able to finish check and smoking a guy like that they want to see because at the next level there's bigger guys better players better skaters and all that stuff um, yeah. and smarter that you can go and finish your check on like a big guy then you could probably you know if you're going to continuously and consistently do that then you're going to be able to play at that next level well, I agree. And a big thing too is, is everybody kind of has their strengths and like you said, find a role, but it's not about being a complete, not for everyone, like a complete all around player in every spot. But like if your strengths are playing with energy and get running around and keep working on your strengths even more, because that'll, that helps you stand out more. If you're a re really good playmaker, just, you know, you don't have to worry about running around as much, but yeah, it's just, yeah, that. when you say playmaker i mean the biggest thing like like how you mentioned before and and life skills is is you got to have that drive and work ethic if you if you hunt pucks down and you're a playmaker you're going to get that many more uh opportunities to make plays um yeah. but also to get probably more points if you're if you're getting those chances percentage wise you're probably gonna get more assists or, or points that way yeah yeah i think do you have any other victoria like salsa um playing with some of those players back in the day of how you were able to uh, i'm sure i've i've heard around too like you know you're a big dressing room guy a great teammate you're always there for your guys not only to fight for them but uh yeah uh, it's 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 just so it's funny it's um like i i i'm happy that there's less way less fighting i'm happy that there's no like goons anymore uh but I'll remember the story of the shootout. I do. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. So what was it? It was overtime. We're playing Surrey in Victoria, the salsa and our cat or their goalie started piling up all the snow in front of the net. So our captain, Jason Keene jumps the boards and tells the ref and they move all the snow out, all that kind of stuff. And so of course we go down and shoot. So as soon as, we go to shoot their tough guy who doesn't play a shift the whole game jumps the boards and starts shooting snow at our goalie. And I knew right away, like no one has to say anything, but I had to jump and I just jumped the boards and I had to go fight him. I had to go help fight him for a teammate and he beat me too. But I was just like, that's the thing. It's like, I was I'm willing to, to do it for the yeah. boards. Yeah. I remember that story as a fight and shootouts and neither. I don't know if you ever really see that too often. So that was the old school way when there was like, there wasn't really stuff on the internet yet to find out whether games would call, you would call like the, the, some hotline. It was like this thing. It was like the same thing you could call for movies back then. You call this hotline and it'd be like, all right, today, today's games in the BC junior hockey league, we had so-and-so playing so-and-so and then they'd say the score. And I remember calling that night and it just said, well, today in the BC junior hockey league, we had a fight in the shootout. And I was just like, I was kind of like more mortified than anything. <laughs> But it was just like my mom was furious. I remember <laughs> that hotline thing. I used to call them. I was a little fan. I yeah, I know. It's real. Yeah. Now we have all this internet technology stuff. For so, so also too though, wasn't it? What I had heard too is wasn't it? So he, they were piling snow. But did you hop the bench and pile snow too, or you didn't? You just went and scrapped the guy. No, I didn't pile snow. But their like meatball jumps the bench and started like shooting snow at our goalie, like in the like at, like in the middle of the shootout. So I was just like, all right. <laughs> yeah so bad so, but it's just like I look back at stuff like uh, how <laughs> but yeah, yeah I've been showing up showing up at school uh because I was 15 I was riding with teammates to practice every day and we had to get a bill at one of the guys that played on the team that would drive me he'd come to my school and we'd have to drive together every day and it was just like I'd be showing up at school like just black eyes, broken nose all the time. People just like it was, but yeah, I remember one of the, so you, the boys. when you had gatherings and being friends with your younger brother, Cal, I remember that one time when I had Bill at Martin Korea over and 
sort of for the year and he you had him over I ended up coming over and then you had that I don't know everyone was finishing up but we were in the same car I remember it was like you Greg Zan and uh it potentially might have been Keen and maybe Nate Leslie maybe and uh I don't know everyone was going home but I remember in the car I was like in my dream world of hanging out with the salsa guys when I was oh no and like probably Petty was there too yeah yeah yeah. Yeah. no those were uh that's the thing though it's like that's that culture of like just the brotherhood of playing sports and that's you know um I haven't like I hadn't played in four years since my I retired with neck and back surgeries and I literally opened like I said opened my, up my bag last week and I hadn't opened it up in four years I didn't know what I had didn't know what I needed what what was what to do basically to get to get dressed again went out and played my first men's league game and literally being in the locker room with the guys was took me back to just being a kid again it was just the way we just talked to each other and and yeah and it was so fun until the next day when i was so sore i couldn't basically walk for five days just because you know you go back and you're just gonna go 100 miles an hour again because that's (laughs) no but it was yeah it was really cool it was a lot of fun i missed it